so far what we've done is uh, really looked at a very wide panel of genomic abnormalities in T cell lymphomas and uh, identified two that are particularly important, uh, first because of their recurrence, so that they occur in many patients, uh, and second uh, because they appear to have some uh, prognostic significance. The main two genetic abnormalities that we've been looking at, one uh, involves uh, a, um, a locus on the genome that uh, includes the gene IRA4. This is an interferon regulatory factor uh, that in normal lymphocytes uh, controls the response of the normal uh, immune system, uh, but in tumor cells appears to act like an oncogene. In other words, it, it drives tumor cell proliferation. Uh, and it appears that many T cell lymphomas have constitutive activation of IRF4, uh, and so they're in a constantly turned on state, so they're continuously proliferating. So from the clinical aspect, there's a problem with just a very high mortality rate. From the pathology aspect, there's also a problem. Uh, the most common subtype of T cell lymphoma is called not otherwise specified. It's, it's basically a wastebasket diagnosis because uh, we don't understand enough about the molecular pathogenesis and specific genetic abnormalities to be able to pinpoint specific subtypes of T cell lymphoma that might trigger certain treatments uh, by the treating oncologist. I think one beautiful thing about uh, both the SIM program and Mayo as a whole is the collaborative atmosphere here and uh, the ability to form really effective teams really easily. Um, so uh, for example, I'm a pathologist, uh, uh, George is a bioinformatician, uh, we also have uh, clinical oncologists, uh, cytogeneticists uh, on the team and uh, the ability to bring these people together. Uh, so easily and with such enthusiasm, I think really moves the project uh, forward very quickly. Uh, the relationship with SIM started because uh, we had identified a uh, novel translocation in T cell lymphomas, uh, but we're having a difficult time actually characterizing it. So uh, we knew roughly where the translocation, where in the genome the translocation uh, occurred. Uh, but we, we couldn't narrow it down and we didn't know the partner genes. In meeting with George and hearing about some of what he had been doing, uh, we were able to uh, apply for a small pilot grant uh, from SIM to support the uh, next generation sequencing for this project. And uh, using that, we very quickly uh, were able to identify the uh, exact breakpoint of the translocation as well as various partner genes. And this is uh, something that we had been working on probably for two years before this. Uh, and with next-gen sequencing, we were able to nail it down in about two weeks.